Hello everyone, I want to do the queues question now. As we know, queues are a very common data structure in computer science, so it's good to know how they work and to be able to solve some, some problems with them. So this question is kind of a bit convoluted and uh, confusing, but I'll try to go through it and solve it uh, here in the editor. So I hope the font is big enough. Um, so the basic idea is you're given some integers in a list here. So this is going to be a list, and this is going to be an integer. And you're supposed to output another list, I think. So you're going to be given a list, uh, which represents a queue. Okay. And you're also given an integer x. It must perform x iterations of the following three-step process. So one, two, three here, right? So we're going to kind of follow this uh, procedure here that they describe. And then at the end, you're supposed to compute a list of x integers, uh, and the ith of which is the one based index and the original array of the element which had been removed in step two during the iteration. Okay, so, and they also give an example here, but it's a bit of a long example. So I think I'll just, as I go through these uh, conditions here, I'm going to just code out my solution, and hopefully that'll help you understand what's going on. So, firstly, um, they say we're given a list of integers which represents a queue. So why don't we put that in a queue right away here in Python? So you could build your own queue class, but there in the uh, in the collections module there's a a double-ended queue uh, data structure that you can use. So I'm just going to use that. So to do that, I will do from collections import. I think this they want you to pronounce this deck, or I don't know why, but okay, like a double-ended queue. That's what this is. Um, okay, and then we're going to put our numbers here in this double-ended queue. So how do we do that? First, let's initialize a double-ended queue. You can do it that way. And for what they want you to do here, it's important to keep track of uh, the index of where these things are in in the in the queue. So I'm going to do for e in enumerate of the array q. Actually, I'll call this q. I don't know why I called it d. Q dot append e. And so the nice thing about these double-ended queues is you can append and append left and pop and pop left all in constant time, right? So let me just show you what this looks like by printing Q here. Print Q and then I'll return an empty list here so it doesn't give me an error. So let's run that to see what this Q thing looks like. Okay, so of course we failed our test cases, but it shows us the information we printed out. So here is the first test case. So these are, so the enumerate thing gives you tuples, right? It gives you tuples of the index and the value in, in the array. So we have 0, 1. Actually, um, so they use, I guess, this example down here, right? So the array is 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. So we have 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. And 0 through uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are the indices, right, of those values in that list. And here we have another test case, right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 with the values of another array. Okay, so this is our queue here. Um, so now let's go through this three-step process that we have to do x times. Um, so... Let's do that. Okay, for blank in range x, we have to do something x times, right? So you must perform x iterations of the following three steps process. So, first of all, pop x elements from the front of the queue, or if it contains fewer than x elements, pop all of them. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do this with a while loop. So first i equals zero, and then while i is less than x, we're going to do i plus equal to 1. 
So we want to pop pop X elements. So we're going to do Q dot pop left. And we want to find the maximum, find the largest value, right? If there are multiple such elements, take the one which has been popped the earliest and remove it. So we want to find the maximum. And then for the, for the other ones, we want to append them back onto the queue. But first we decrement the value. So let's do one step at a time. So, so we're going to pop these X elements. And we want to keep track of which one's the maximum. So uh, let's do if, well, let's, okay, let's call this popped. If uh, popped uh, one, right? So the popped is going to be a tuple, like these guys down here, right? So I want to check if the value is greater than some maximum, right? Let's call it maxi. Let's initialize maxi to be like negative infinity. Right, so if the pop value is greater than maxi, then we found our uh, we found a maximum. Um, okay, then maxi equals popped one, and we want to keep track of the index here because that's the last step here, uh, or that's what they want you to output. They want you to output the indices of the maxima that you find. All right, so it's a bit complicated, but uh, let me sh let me show you the code. So I'm going to call this index to remove equals popped zero, right? So here now we need the, the first value of these tuples, right? So, uh, right. Okay. So now we found the, the maximum and then we're going to create a list of these popped values. So let's call it pop Lee for pop list. Okay. That's going to be initially empty and then here we're going to append our popped value. So pop lee dot append, uh, what is it? Popped, okay. Okay, so now, now we did step one and part of step two, I guess. We've popped X elements and we found the largest and we've marked it or we've, uh, we, uh, we store this in a variable to remember which one it is. Um, now, for each of the remaining elements that were popped, decrement its value by one if it's positive, otherwise if its value is zero, then it's left unchanged, and then add it back to the queue. So let's do that. So for, let's see. Um, for t in our list, right, t is going to be a tuple. We're going to check, first of all, if if, uh, if if it's the one we should remove, we don't want to append that to our queue, right? So we check that. So if t0 is not equal to the index to remove, then we add things back onto the queue. So queue.append. And then we append a tuple. So what's the tuple going to be? First of all, it's going to be, well, t0. Sorry. And then it does say we have to decrement the value by 1. OK, so how do we, so we can just decrement the value by 1. So it's going to be t1 minus 1. But it also says if it's 0, then it's left unchanged. So we can simply do a max of 0 and then the value. All right. And I'm guessing I'm missing one of these. Yeah. All right. So that should take care of that. So now we've added the stuff onto the queue again. And then we do want to keep track of the things we need to output at the end. So I'm going to first create an empty list here and call it out, right? It's the final thing we're going to return. I'm going to make the font. I'm going to remove this. So we're going to return out. So here 
I'm going to append uh, the index to remove, right? Index, well, this is what we called it, right? And then I'm going to add one because they want the one based index in the original array. So it's all a bit confusing, but I think this should work out. Um, okay, and then what are we missing? Let's see if I can run this and get it to work. There may be a few issues that I need to fix. Let's see, runtime error, okay. What is the error? Pop from an empty queue. Okay, so there, you're right, there are a few things I need to fix. So one of the issues here was uh, pop X elements from the front of the queue, or if it contains fewer than X elements, pop all of them. So here we might have fewer than X, so I'm gonna do, well, Q and that, right? Just to make sure the queue is not empty. Um, okay, let's try it running that again. Let's see, okay, we passed our test cases. All right, and the test cases look like this down here. So that's good, I think we're on the right track with this solution here. Uh, let me look at one more thing here. So here, just to be sure, we could have, uh, we could put index to remove equals none, right, to initialize it here. Um, but even without that line of code, it should should work in this case, given the constraints that we have here. All right, I think that basically solves the problem. And yeah, this is an example of how to use a queue, right? I mean, this problem is not very interesting, but it shows you an example of how you can use this double-ended queue uh, thing in, in, from Python <laughs> and other languages have an equivalent uh, data structure built in or most languages have something like this built in so you can use that or you could write your own as I said but this works nicely okay I hope that's uh, somewhat clear and if you have a better solution feel free to let me know this is maybe not super clean but it seems to work all right thank you